بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لهبة في الله due to the pressing need to understand this very important topic which is how to interact with one's non-Muslim parents because as is no mystery for many of us who uh, embraced Islam that our non-Muslim relatives often do not understand the new way of life and the new faith that we've embraced. And often, more often than not, we do not understand properly this new way of life. And we make many mistakes. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, we grow in, the, in, in this faith. Meaning that we embrace it, we embrace some of its principles, and pillars, but we're unaware because we're new to the faith of many, uh, many of the rulings and how to interact with others. And due to this problem, we make sometimes very severe mistakes. We're often harsh with our non-Muslim relatives and our associates from before Islam, and this can be quite a turnoff for them and for the non-Muslims in general. So it's very important that we understand what is the Muslim perspective? How should the, the new Muslim interact with their, uh, especially their parents and their kinfolk? The very short and concise treaties we're going to go over to is by one of our mashayikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak bin Badr uh, ibn Abdul Mahsin bin Abbad al Badr, and he is the son of our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Mahsin al Abbad, and who is a great teacher and a muhaddith and an alam, a great scholar who teaches in the Prophet Wasallam's masjid in Medina and mainly teaches hadith books and sometimes aqidah books and so on and so forth. And Jazallah khairan to the Shaykh and to the translator, our brother Rashid ibn Estes Barbi, half of Allah Ta'ala, and the brothers and sisters at Merkaz at Tawheed was Sunnah in North Carolina. The Sheikh began his treaties, he said, All praises belongs to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. I bear witness that nothing has the, worship, the, the right to be worshipped except for Allah alone without partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the prayers and peace be upon him and his family and his companions collectively. As to what follows, the discussion pertaining to honoring the parents is an extremely tremendous affair. That is made apparent as Allah connects the rights of the parents with his rights in numerous places in the Noble Quran. <clears throat> and here the Shaykh is, is letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To be worshipped alone. To be worshipped alone. That we don't worship Jesus, we don't worship Moses, we don't worship Muhammad, we don't worship uh, uh, Abraham, we don't worship Adam, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. We love all of them. And we follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was the last Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam. But divinity is only for the one who created them. Al-Khaliq, Al-Bari, the creator of the heavens and earth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has... Uh, in the Quran, he has tied the rights in, in various verses. He has uh, shown that these are some of the greatest things that you can, uh, actions that you can carry out. With the first, and, the first being 
worshiping him and him alone. And along with that is honoring the rights of your parents and being kind and gentle towards them. And in the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be dutiful to your parents. And, the, and Allah the Exalted said, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْءٍ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in another verse in the Qur'an Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship and do good to parents and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ قُلْ تَعَالُوا وَتْلُوا مَا حَرَمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْءٍ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in another verse in the Qur'an, Say, O Muhammad, come, that is that's the meaning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him and be good and dutiful to your parents. And the law, the Almighty and Exalted said in another verse, and And we have commanded or enjoined on man to be dutiful and good to his parents. So to be thankful to him and to be thankful and dutiful to one's parents. All, <coughs> as the Shaykh the Shaykh goes on to say, he said, all of this is clear proof upon the great rights of the parents and the obligation to honor them and show them kindness. And it is a warning against disobeying them and treating them harshly. The topic of kindness to parents is a very broad topic, but based upon the desires of the noble brothers, the topic will be restricted to showing kindness to the parents if they are not upon Islam and they are upon polytheism. Likewise, how should the new Muslim interact with his non-Muslim parents? So there the Shaykh outlined the topic for us after giving us some of the verses which illustrate without, uh, un unequivocally, those verses illustrate for us the great rights of our parents over us. And that regardless of whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, those verses are general, that general in meaning, all-encompassing, that you should be kind and gentle and caring and loving towards your parents, regardless of whether they worship Allah or they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is how we will begin the treaties, and we'll try to keep them as short sittings, and hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing in these sittings, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.